Okay, guys, we got a live gameplay example. I'm going to show you when exactly do you change formations in the game because people keep asking me this question. I upload a Friday tactics video, but now when do you change formation? So, the way I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you this now. This is not my regular tactics setup, but this is just done for instructional purposes, which is more basic for everyone else to understand. You can see that this is more of a defensive formation with basically every player on comeback and offense. Okay. You can see that as I go through the formations, as you can see, this one is a bit more attacking. The depth's a little bit higher, the width's a little bit higher, and I've got forward runs. And you can see I've got less players on comeback and defense. You can pause this if you want to see, but I'm just showing you this for example, okay? In all these tactics, they all got incrementally. This is like now a press tactic. You can see press on possession, lost two strikers. We've got these guys on balance. These guys still on stay back while attacking. And then we have the ultra attacking tactic. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is to show you, look, it doesn't matter what your tactical layout is. I show you my tactical layout on Friday because I want to show you what I use. But let's say, for example, you're unaware and you watch this for the first time. You have a defensive formation, a balanced formation, a more attacking variation to press when you're losing, maybe you want a goal or you're struggling, and all-out attack formation when you need to get the goal back. So I'm going to explain to you how you use it inside the game. So let's first start and go into a game so I can show you live. And I'm going to explain to you how I adjust it depending on where the game is. So let's go into a game. Okay, so very fortunately we, we don't play uh, the best of teams now. I use, a, I use a good team on this end. Very rarely you actually see me use a good team, but they normally see me use like a 500k to a million coin to a 100k team, just to prove an example. Um, but this will be the odd exception. Okay, so when I go into a game, I'm not gonna underestimate my opponent. It could be F2 Techs playing this game, okay? So I'm just gonna pause the game very, very quickly. I'm just going to turn off the input controller because we have that anyway and I don't want that to be confusing anyone. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now, I don't know how good my opponent is. He could be Tex, he could be the best player in the world, it could be MS Tassari, I don't know. So I'm going to go now to my ultra defensive formation. Just go in and suss the game on that. This will depend on your skill level. If you know, for example, you're a player, and don't forget when you change formation, it takes a bit of time to change in game. Normally you have to wait for the ball to go out of play or whatever. So it depends on your skill level. If you know, for example, you're good enough and you can press from the first minute, if you're an elite rank one player, then you know you can do that. If, for example, you're sitting here saying, you know what, I'm a division three player. I don't feel comfortable. Then you know, let's just say I just take a shot, a random wild shot here. I just want the ball ready to go out of play here at the moment of time. Oh yeah, first aspect, first defensive phase. I want to be a bit more defensive because I don't know how the game is going. I'm going to rotate the ball around here. Just see, for example, with the white curse, he's not using his CDMs. Um, this is a bit extreme, but these are things you can do. Just look at, oh, how's he defending? He's dragging his CDMs out. So all I've got to do is simply do a one two around him, and I'm pretty much fine. I can see he's pressing very highly. If I do a quick one two into the space, I can find the gap. That's the kind of things I look out for. Okay, now, counter attack. Get ready here. Now, that's a one two. I set my right back going forward. I don't want to take a risk because if I go one nil down, kick off is too long because the ball hasn't gone out of play. I'm going to rotate the ball. I'm going to go forward now. You can see he's taking touch there. I'm just going to just take a shot here. I really want the ball to go out play more than anything. So now you're on your defensive formation, okay? So now you've got a good gauge. You can see on the radar he's playing somewhat of a 4, looks like a 4-3-3. Three, three. So I'm going to be a bit weary. He's got two CDMs and he's got all these players on stay forward. So I think we should be fine to attack with this formation. So as you can see, I'm just going to play as it is. Now, what would happen is, let's say after 15 minutes or so, you think, okay, you know my opponent, he's playing a bit aggressive. Look, he's actually going back. He's recycling the play. And let's say you're struggling to get the ball. Or let's say you're sitting a bit too deep. You could always go to my defensive. So my defensive is just my 4-2-3-1. But that's just a bit more attacking. The depth's a little bit higher. Not everyone's on comeback and defense because i got time to react. So here we're going to defend the situation first. So you can see we get the ball back. And the formation has changed now. So now I can be a bit aggressive. I don't want to be sitting too back now. Because I see that he's pushing and committing players going forward, so I take a bit of a risk. I can still bring back manually my cam if I want to for defensive stability. My CDM here, get the ball. Now, because I've got the laminar ammo on balance, they're going to be going a bit forward a bit quicker now. I see the space. Unfortunately, he's in the best of three balls. We're going to maintain the press. Using my CDM now. Now, if he brings his CDM, uh, his fullback is going forward, I may change my ultra defensive again. So I'm just kind of seeing how the game is going. Nice turns my opponent. See, look. Even though he hasn't got the best of teams, he actually knows what he's doing. So these players actually scare me the most. He's actually using shimmy, so it scares me even more. So again, we're going to go with a simple build-up play. You can't try to run past some member, what I said to you. Do the one-twos. Get into the space. Wait for the overlap. Is he overlapped? Yes, he is. 
Okay, now bring it back in the inside. We see Messi there. We go inwards, go a bit outwards again. See, have we got a chance to take a shot? We do. Okay, fine. We didn't miss. Got passed, got lucky. Then we score. Go. Okay, fine. Now, it's 1 0, okay? Now, you have to make a decision. Do you want to go ultra defensive and sit back the entire game? No, because you're going to invite pressure. So I'll go to my ultra defensive because then I've got everyone on comeback and defense. But you see, I'm still going to play attacking. I'm just going to be a bit more wary. I don't have to commit forward all the time. I can let my opponent have the ball a bit more because I know that he needs to score, not myself. It's like how they do in real life, just like how teams do. They kind of sit, but they're not just sitting back and parking the bus. They're being progressive because now it's the time to apply pressure and still be safe. So you're being safe now. He gets past. He takes a shot from a, 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 not a, a good angle. That's fine. Goalkeeper here. We're going to bring the goalkeeper out here. Add him into this slot here just where the, the spot is. Let's head the ball away. Okay, fine. We're now going to pass the ball downwards. We made a big, big mistake here. Let's recover now because the only thing we can do is made a really, really good play for my opponent. He tried to outsmart me. Thankfully, um, I read that somewhat decently well and it wasn't the best of players. Again, L1 trigger. Got a bit lucky there. See, I'm still playing attacking. I'm still doing what? I'm not just sitting there. I'm not, I'm not going like this. He made a mistake like, oh, one nil ahead. Let me just start doing this the entire game. No. The best form of defense is attack. The way I like to do it is I like to bring the ball into this area. Now, this is what I like to call the, I call it pinning. It's the act of psychologically breaking down your opponent by forcing him into making a mistake, by putting pressure on him, by holding it outside his box. So I'm not actually going forward unless there's a clear chance. Now, what this does is he's losing one nil. And the psychological aspect of this is very important because he realizes, hmm, I need to get the ball back. But if he stands there and does nothing, I can quickly rotate the ball around him. He hasn't got time to react. So that's why I call this pinning because we pinned him inside his box. We're forcing him to come out. And we find a clear obvious space, for example, like here. Then we go in and then we take our shot. Again, same thing here. We're not going to rush. We're not going to panic. See, let him bring... So I'm watching his CDMs now. That was meant to be to my CDM. I don't know what that pass was. We're not going to panic. We're just going to run back here with... With Messi, going to run back. Why, why bring my center back out? I don't need to use my CDM first. Now I've got to use my left back. Okay, use him. I can see he's cut inside. That's fine. So left footed. He's going to hold the line. Pass there. Okay, nice. Pass downwards. Okay, beautiful. L1 trigger. Can I pass the ball to him? No, but I can do a butterfly wings all the way around. We can bring the ball back. Now again, we're going to go for the art of pinning. Let him go to his defensive stage. Now we're going to bring the ball all the way back to our CDMs. And we're going to pin him. Now we're going to watch for Fabinho. Watch for Fabinho and Goretzka, okay? You're going to see that they're going to create space for me. See, look, he's got two. So I'm in between his two strikers. He's playing a 4 4 2. So let's let him bring his, his ram out. And just pass the ball around. That's Goretzka. Now he's out. Goretzka's out of position. Then we see our space. And then we take a chance. You see, I only pushed forward and committed once he made the mistake, you see? And that's why it's called pinning, because you let him make the mistake, you let him, and you see, even though I've got a good team compared to, in case you're new here, normally I play with a cheaper team, but the reason why I'm using a good team is it's the exact same thing. I don't change the way that I play. Now, maybe at this stage, we're coming to 42 minutes, okay? So let's go here, let's say, would you save it, do the same thing, quick one, twos, balance the ball back here, we're gonna do it. What does it matter? Again, I'm not doing anything special, just simple, Anyone can run down the wing, just using pace here, no using ball scoops, none of that mechanic of using nonsense. Just basic football. We bring the ball back, we pin him again. We see the space. I don't want him, I don't want to score again because he's probably going to leave. But let's say, for example, here you're in this stage and look, you're coming up to half time now. Okay. I'm 2 0. But what do you think your opponent's going to do now? Let's think about this just logically. Don't think of FIFA, just think about this carefully and logic. No, sorry, think about this naturally. If your opponent is losing 2 0, what are they going to do? They're going to go attacking. They're going to, of course, apply more pressure. And this people believe that DDA exists, scripting exists, because your opponents become more attacking. Well, they're not going to be sitting back playing a defensive formation with two CDMs anymore. They're going to change their tactics, become more attacking. So I'm going to anticipate that. So on my actual, my attack in 4 2 3 1, instead of making this the part the bus formation, I'm going to put these guys on come back in the fence, get rid of a, keep, uh, get rid of that. And then maybe from, for example, my defensive one. I can, if I want to, my uh, ultra defense, I can put drop back on. I don't play drop back, but if you want to, you can do that. So now I got my ultra defensive drop back counter system, my defensive 4 2 3 1, because I can still, don't forget the 4 2 1 is still a very attacking formation. It's just that when I'm, when I don't have position the ball, I don't have my players on stay forward. So you can just have every man behind the ball, because I'm expecting him to commit his left back and right back going forward. I'm assuming that. So you can see he's applying pressure now. Thankfully for slow build up play, 
We can quickly alleviate the pressure here. Quick doing quick one twos, butterfly wings, base football. You see, we're getting pressed here. You're not sure. Stay safe. Take touches away, guys. Take touches away. You can see here made a mistake. I'll do a slide tackle to anticipate the ball forward. It's a bit high level thing to do. Is to do a slide tackle before you get to the ball to anticipate it here. Now, I'm just going to try to get a goal here now. Okay, we lost the ball. Now, we're not too sure. We've got one CDM here. We're going to, okay, the ball went through our feet. We're not too sure here. Now, we've got to make a decision. I'm going to go here, take a tactical foul. It was a good tackle in the end. Um, but if I didn't get the ball, see how I stayed in front of him. That way, if I didn't get the ball, then at least I would have got a yellow card or he wouldn't have got through. So either would have got the ball or got the man. So you see, look, one will do now. It's time to hug the sidelines. Make my team naturally wider. So look, now he's pressing me. I'm just going to psychologically store the game. And that means just pass the ball around, take out his psychological momentum. Again, the key thing here being psychological momentum. Stop believing all this nonsense. If you want to believe in DDA, then I don't care, believe in it. But if you're going to cry about it, it's not going to help you get better at the game, guys. It's important I tell you this because other consequences will be like, oh, DDA is going to kick in. It's not. Focus, control the game. You'll be fine, I can assure you. In the long run, the more you play the game, the more you get used to it. You'll make mistakes like this, but you'll learn how to recover. Don't just think the game's going to go against you because as soon as that mental barrier kicks in, you're in trouble. You see how I brought you saved your back there to a neutral situation. Okay, got the ball with Cancelo. Driven pass down the wing. One, two. Bit of a risky pass. I don't know why my pass is going the wrong way here. Bit of delay. Not too sure. Okay, made a risk here. Going to play a bit safer. Not too sure. Again, go for the one, two. He's got hugged the sidelines on. Now we see Neymar into the space. We're going to keep running down the wing. You see you, you save your outside of box and L1 trigger. We can't really make the pass just yet. So we're going to dribble it around. Look on the radar. He's got four players on stay forward, I believe. And he's got two center mids on stay forward. So you see, now I can pin him between his attacking line and his defensive line. So again, we're going to take a touch away. And we're just going to pin him again. Look, he's got four players on stay forward again. Don't panic. He's running out with his CDM. What does that mean? He's center back. What does that mean? Now he's got no center back. Now we can counter him. Is it too... Uh, are we guaranteed? No, we're just going to go back. He's got four pl five players on stay forward, guys. Look. See? See, I anticipated that at half time. So again, do an L1 trigger. Push that player down the ring. That's Mbappe. Let him come to me. And just keep the ball on the outside, see? And you can do this to entire game if you want to. But as you guys are a better player, they will know what to do. So start making use of your chances. L1 triggers. If you're really not sure, L1 triggers here. Do a fake shot stop. Where to go to wave. Lofted pass. Again, keeping the ball safe. Look on the radar. It's 6v6. Can you see that? So all I've got to do now is just take a touch away. See, he's frustrated. So that's the psychological barrier you've got to focus on. Okay, now bring a player close. We're going to now uh, pin him inside the box. He wants to park the bus. It's his problem. Here, we're going to pin him. See a good chance. Bring the ball back to Messi. We lost the ball. Okay, there, that's Tierney. We're going to run back from our left back now. Why? Because it was, it was, a, uh, it was a, uh, a set piece, should I say. So to say goal kick. Beautiful through ball. Now we're not sure. Bring the goal kick by a little bit. Scare him a little bit. Do a beautiful slide tackle. Get the ball back here. Not panicking. Running away, running away, taking a touch. Where do I do it? If I can't go through, I bounce it back. Do the butterfly wings. Can I, can I get through? Not too sure. Do an L1 triangle. Guarantee the safety. Get the board messy now. 70 minutes. Start looking to be smart now. You don't want to get counter-attacked. And you don't want to be too aggressive. Corner. Corners are also uh, counter-attack potential. So you can see, um, I should have probably reduced my corners down to one as well. So I don't get countered here. Bring back Eusebio. Bringing back my cam before using my CDM. Using my CDMs here. Not too sure now. Using my left back. On the line, not committing forwards, heading the ball away, not panicking, L1 trigger, not panicking, sees running towards me, ball roll on the outside, driven through ball, down the wing. And he's going for the early lofted pass, we get the ball to Eusebio. Here he's going to wait for the overlap to Neymar, ball roll, and let's just have some fun now. Um, good play for my opponent. Okay, now we've lost the ball again. So now 80 minutes you can consider now, you know what, it's time to close out the game. That's Cancel over there. You can see we'll make some tactical fouls there. Okay, we're not too sure. We're going to run our back with our CDM. Let him play like an extra center back just for now. Kind of anticipate what's going on. You don't really know. You don't want to concede now. Get the ball. See, look, see, I ran out. See, this is the thing. If that was my center back there, then I would have been out of position. But you see, I brought my CDM. I committed forward my CDM. That way, my back four is there as a safety net. Do you see that? Now, 18 minutes. Let's think about closing the game out now. Normally, I'll go ultra defensive, but we're doing pretty well here with slow build-up play. So why change it? So we can go towards closing out the game. You go back to the pinning type system, or you can go back to getting the ball down the wing areas. Again, we lost the ball. This is fine. You're probably going to lose the ball with constant pressure. There's no definitive way to defend. Even pros struggle against this. Here, it's going to keep the ball safe. We see loads of space in front of us. We're going to knock the ball going forward. And as soon as this guy gets close to us, we're going to use a ball run. We're going to turn the ball around. 
and keep it safe. Now you see he's very, very smart. He went on the inside there. Now we pinned him and we're going to bring it back and then we're going to try to pin him outside his box now. That was meant to be to you, Savior. Okay, that's fine. Sometimes there's passes that happen. Not too sure. Play defensive. Really not sure. Just do that tactical foul. Held the line there. L1 trigger. Going to do a lob. I think that's offside. So I'm going to let it go. It was. Didn't let go. Here, going to bring back Eusebio a little bit here. Going to use my CDM. Apply a bit of pressure. So Eusebio kind of boxed him in. Do a 1-2. Now that's my CDM Hakimi now. So that's Hakimi. See, if I pass the ball to Hakimi, now I've got no CDM. So you have to be very careful who you pass the ball. Just because your CDM is running forward. It might not be the obvious option past him. Sorry I'm speaking so fast, by the way. I just have to say this in real time because I'm recording this course in real time so you guys can see it. And now we come towards the end of the game. And of course, you can just close it out or do whatever you want. Um, don't mess around like this, though. Like, don't don't take chance like this because if he gets the ball back and he, and, and he scores now, then you can, of course, uh, score. But you can see a lot of people like now, like psychologically, they're done now because they know even if they get the ball back, it's theoretically impossible because if they go forward and score a goal now, um, they can't get another goal in time. And then normally about this time, I just mess about. Because, you know, the, the, now as soon as the ball goes out of play, it's done. So you can see he's put his controller down. He knows it's GG. And basically, so do I. I can basically keep running as long as I want in the final third. Uh, up until the, the game kind of goes out of play. This is how the final attack works. And it's only when the ball really goes out of play. For example, like that, where you score a goal. Um, and then we tune he kicks off, he'll finish like that. Because why the time has gone past limit. But anyway, guys. Sorry for the keep quick run over it was very very hard to get all the information i wanted there but that is how you change and when to change formation and game and how to control the game anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching hope this is a good insight again apologies i did speak fast but i had to kind of replicate what i was doing in real time which of course is very hard anyway guys thanks for watching take it easy and of course i'll catch you next time peace out